Welcome back. Today we're going to tie Kelly Gallup's Wooly Sculpin. Uh, there's one change that I'm going to have on this one from the original. I'll explain it when I get there. It's on the body. Uh, just something that, uh, just a minor tweak. Uh, really doesn't make a big difference in the fly. Get a little bit more flash this way, but uh, feel free to do it either way uh, as I'll explain as we go further into it. But with this one, we're going to do a little bit different on the colors. We're going to take and do an olive over cream. Typically, when I had tied these in the past, um, it was all a solid color, like all yellow, all olive, brown, gray, whatever it may have been. And I didn't really break the colors up too much. We're going to do that a little bit on this one and uh, go olive over cream. So if you look at a lot of the sculpting that are out there, you'll see that they'll have like a dark mottled back and then the underside is, is like a, a tan cream, uh, somewhere along those lines. So that's what we're gonna do with these ones, or with this one here today. And I'm just gonna start with a thread base. This is a 4X long hook. This is an MFC 7008. Um, and I'm gonna start with gel spun 100. I'm gonna leave about, quarter of the front of the hook uncovered and that's going to tell me where I want my material to stop and where I want my deer hair head to begin. If you do this, if you're tying a bunch of them, obviously once you get into, uh, if you're tying a bunch of them, you want them all to look the same, you know, you want your heads to be the same size, you want them to be, uh, you know, your tails proportioned properly throughout. And this is a good way to help get that consistency. Find a spot where you like the head to be, where you like the collar to start, and start with, and, and just nail that. Um, I'm sorting through materials here, and but nail that, nail that spot down to where you want it. Like this is exactly how I want my head. Start your thread there every single time, and it will just make your fly your consistency so much better. So with that being said, we're going to start on the tail and we're going to go with a cream tail underneath and I'm going to measure this out the length of the hook. It's a 4x long so the tail is going to be, a, it's going to whip around a little bit more because the tail is going to be slightly longer but that's only going to help your fly. So we'll get that tied in and I'm just going to run this up to my tie or my starting point or stopping point depending on how you're looking at it. And then I'm going to find some gold or not gold, uh, copper holographic flashaboo. And I want two strands. Just like so, double that over with that material sometimes it makes it a lot easier to work with when you're tying it in. So like I said, I'm going to double that over, I'm going to do four strands on each side of the tail just to have some internal flash. I'm going to run that laterally, one, two and work this on the opposite side just nice secure wraps nothing too crazy and then we'll trim that same length on the opposite side now what we're going to do is go into that's a perfect feather right there we're going to go with an olive wing yeah that one's that one's going to work pretty good. I thought there was one piece that was busted off on it, but it's going to work out pretty good for us. So we're going to take this olive, and it's a little bit webbier than what the cream was, and that's by design. You want it a little bit bulkier. Uh, it'll overtake that cream just slightly because the majority of the fly or the majority of a sculpin is that over the, the, the top section. I was a little confused there for a second. 
Um, the top section is the majority of where the color and everything is. You look on the underside and it's really just a pretty thin line in the center section on the belly that's that cream. So we wanna try and do a little bit heavier on the olive, but to just make sure that we do have some cream on that underneath section. So once again, I'm just gonna run that forward and I need about two wraps right there we go I was a little bit shy on that one Let's look on the opposite side we're good now I'm going to take some copper wire and this is going to be our counter rib get that over there I'm going to take this copper and tie it in this is a size small uh, typically I would probably go with a brassy It'd be about the right size, um, but small was what was on the bench. And small is what we're using. How about that? Now we'll take and form a dubbing loop. And this is what I was alluding to earlier when I was saying about the body being different. Um, on the original, let me find it here. On the original, when Kelly initially did this pattern, he used uh, chenille for, for the body. I'm gonna sub on this one and I'm gonna use some UV uh, ice stub. This is just a UV tan. And I'm gonna sub on this, but if you want, by all means, go with the, go with the chenille. Uh, they have some stuff out there now that has some it's got some sparkle, got some flash, got a little bit of everything into it. There's some pretty neat chenilles out there, but I like that this keeps a little bit more slender on the body. So that's what I'm going to go with today. What I typically go with when I tie this pattern. So I'm going to get my first wrap, have everything covered, and then I'm just working this all the way to the front where I am stopping for the head so you can see this now I've got the body tied in I've got my rib set back off to the side let me kick out a little bit Let's see if that helps that looks better so now what I'm gonna do is take a This is a barred saddle. This is a uh, olive and black. Let me see, that's not long enough. Not quite long enough. But this is just a, I'll show you the package here in a second once I get one out that I'll, well, I see the one that I'm after. Down toward the end of the pack here, so. But I see the one that I want. There she is. That looks good. So, like I was saying, this is just a barred olive and black from MFC. Um, show you the package there. Good little product. Um, has a nice, nice effect. Adds a nice effect to the fly. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of that webby section, and I'm going to get that in the first turn or two of the of this hackle. And I'm going to tie this in, just get some good secure wraps, make sure that it's in place. Package side is facing up, or it will be facing the front as we wrap it. That may be difficult when it gets time to the deer hair work, I may have to turn it back. Let's see here, so now I'm just going to take this, grab my hackle pliers. And I'm gonna get that first rotation. One, I'm gonna add a little bit more. That first section's just a little bulkier. I didn't like how aggressive that angle was coming back, so I'm just gonna redo that. And there we go. Nice even spacing throughout. And then I'm gonna 
bring that copper wire back go in the opposite direction and just rip it straight through all the way up to the front so now we've got our hackle in place we're ready to tie in the deer hair head after we trim some stuff off we'll get rid of that set that off to the side and then trim off that tag end for the hackle all right now you get a couple of loose wraps right here just fill up that section that's all going to be deer hair head so if you look on this underneath side you're able to see there's that mottled effect but then there's still a little bit of tan that shows through so like i was saying before with that tan center section the abdomen the abdomen on these things is a little bit it goes from a very fat head and it gets very slender as it goes toward the tail so that's what we're going to represent here is this because this marabou and everything it's going to slick down once it's wet and it's going to be just a nice clean line back there but the head is going to be a little bit more pronounced on the tan so we're going to do that with with the deer hair and before we start that we find my stacker here there we go before we get to that we're going to create our collar for the imitation of pectoral fins now this collar is also going to be a driver of your fly it's gonna it's gonna keep the fly balanced give me one sec here and let me trim this out it's gonna help with the balance of your fly it's gonna allow it to ride and just kind of wiggle back and forth like that so you want to make sure that you have plenty of material for your collar you want a good fat thick collar to represent these pectoral wings because so like I said it does two things really it represents your wing or er, not wings but your pectoral fins it's going to represent that and also steer your fly just tap that get those nice and even and now we're going to measure this out so remember that you're tying if you're tying on a 4x hook Remember that you're tying that and then measure this out and you want to stop your um, collar before you get to the point of the hook. If you're tying on a 3x hook, take your collar between the point and the barb and that's going to be a good gauge as to how long you want or how long your fibers need to be. So there I'm going to measure that out one more time. I'm going to look, I'm stopping before the collar. I'm going to take this, transfer hands, and just cut that square. So now I'm going to bring this around, and I should have switched to 200, which I will after the collar here. I pull pretty hard on this deer hair, so it will cut right through it if I if I pull too tight. So I'm going to. Be a little more gentle with it than normal than if I were using that 200. So I'll flip this around and you can see now that we've got that collar sitting right there. It's a nice half moon effect. Everything is on the top. It's going to be steering our fly. And we still have a clean underside. That one fiber right there was driving me nuts but like I said we still have a clean underside and we have plenty of room to finish out our head so like I was saying I'm gonna switch over to 200 so you can see like I was talking earlier our collar is stopping prior to the point of our hook 
and we do have a nice full thick collar of deer hair so what we're going to do with this one is take and do a stacked head so we're going to have olive over a bleached deer body hair we're not using belly hair on this one belly hair gets a little bit too compact we want this thing to be able to accept water to help with the sink while we're fishing it so we're going to take that clean up the bleached i always do when i'm tying and this is a personal thing when i'm tying in multicolored deer hair heads i always start with the the bottom section i always go with the lighter section it's easier for me to clear the platform to work with that if i do the bottom it's tougher for me to see the bottom if i start with the top so all i'm going to do is just take a clump right here started to get a little bit of travel one two and then i'll take a third just let that thread disappear you can see it's starting to flare a little bit now I'll release my hand and then just pull tight and you can see it flare everything out once again we don't have a ton of material here our top is still clear I got plenty of room to work with this olive right here so I'm going to take about the same amount of olive deer hair that I used for the bleached. I'm going to use the same thread path. And we're just going to flare this out to where we're going to have a two-toned head. Same thing, we're going to take this bundle I'm setting it right on top and like I said use the same thread path so one two grab a third right through there now you can see I'm in the center of this bundle after cutting the tips off my threads going right down the center so when I pull on this it's gonna flare it out I'm gonna have nice even distribution and I'm hitting them some of the more hollow sections on that material so now just pull straight down you can see that flare you'll feel the threads sink in to your to the hook now I'm just going to move everything back here clear everything out of my way and I'm not com I'm not compressing this I'm not compacting everything I just want this to be nice and clear I'm not running a packer through there and just jamming everything I want it loose when I when I uh, when I'm stacking this hair I'm getting a good amount in there just enough to where I'm able to form the head but not so much to where I'm gonna be taken away or taken away from the sink ability or adding buoyancy to this same thing we're going to do two stacks two top two bottom of each color so now you have all of this hair in your way and you still need to do a second stack of cream and a second stack of olive so how I do this is with my ring and my thumb, I peel everything back just like that. Take right in front and then with my middle finger and pointer, I clear the top section out and then I set my hair in there. Once your hair is set, it's now pushing all of the cream away on the bottom and I'm just holding that in place that all of that is with my pointer finger so now you can see I have this starting to work its way around I'm sucking it up into 
the hook, I'm not fighting it, I'm just pulling that thread up to where it's bringing that material up to the hook. So now I have everything set in how I want. I just pull straight down and I flare that section. And now I'm gonna have a nice clean platform once again to use the same thread path with the olive on the top. Let me just clear a couple of those hairs out. There we go. Still have a nice clean section on the top to put this olive in. A little bit less on this front stack than what you used in the back. Just a little bit less. Once again, cutting the tips off. The only thing that I'm really concerned about getting out of my way is the top section because like I said, I'm using the same thread path as the cream. And then one, try not to catch any of that cream right there. Move that out of my way if need be. There's a third. Just enough pressure to where your thread starts to disappear on you. Pull straight down, flare everything up, feel that sink into the hook. Now, I'm just pushing this back enough to where I can catch my eye and I've got it visible. One, one, two, three, get a couple of good solid wraps there. And then we're gonna take and whip finish. One, two, three. Everything's good. One, two, three. Everything looks good. So now we'll go ahead and cut our thread off there. And see how this that material right there is compressible. That deer hair is, is, is not rigid. It's not so tough to where you're not gonna be able, to, or you're gonna add buoyancy to this. It's still gonna accept water. It's gonna allow the fly to get down below the surface and it's not gonna be riding up like that. So now on to trimming this. We're going to find our eye once again. We're going to work on the bottom section. Just a nice flat cut right through here. Just drawing that right through. Got a little bit of olive travel into the bottom, which I actually kind of like. Typically, I like the nice clean breaks, but I like that olive travel coming into the bottom. Wish I had a little bit more on that opposite side. That would have looked even better. But it'll still fish. Now we're going to grab and just half moon our razor blade. Push it right up toward the tips. Just work your way back to the tips on that collar that you created. One thing that I've that I've learned when when you're pushing when you have your initial um, shape that you want for your razor blade, as you're pushing back, loosen your shape and it won't cut all of this stuff it won't, it'll allow for more of a wedge toward the back of your fly and it won't cut all of that stuff even the entire way back and then you can you can shape it more so with your scissors um, and it'll, it'll give you more of that wedged look that you're after. So I'm just gonna run through this again. I'm gonna take a little bit more off and remember as you're coming back or as you're getting closer to your collar, let loose on 
how how aggressive your your bend is on your blade. Hopefully, when I take this out of the out of the vise, I'll be able to speak to that a little bit better. I'm gonna take and just trim this down a little bit more. You can see that we have nice and even on both sides here so far. Everything's nice and clean. It's even. Sometimes when I noticed that I would be doing it before, I would keep the shape of my of my razor blade the whole way back. And if I were off center when I was pushing it, I'd have a gouge out of one side or the other, and then I'd have to trim with the with the scissors to to correct that gouge. So in order to avoid that, like I was saying, just loosen up or be less aggressive on your bend on the way back and it'll really help that out. So now I'm going to take this out of the vise. It's still pretty rounded. It's still pretty heavy for what I want. I'm going to wind up trimming a decent amount more of this off, but I just want to get a little bit of a shape right here. I want to cut some of this out and I want to get a little bit of a wedge if I can. There we go. Let me make sure that that's in frame right. Good. And then I'm just trimming a little bit of a wedge right through there. One thing that you want to be sure of is not to get too aggressive on this because if you do, there's no putting the deer hair back once you've cut it with wool or laser dub or something like that when you're working with the hedge you can manipulate that and it'll it'll uh, it'll respond you can you can kind of fix some errors on that there's no fixing errors with deer hair just scrap it and start over that's usually what happens with me so what I want to do now is just get rid of some of this to where it's bleeding back into my collar and I'm just putting my thumb right there feathering this stuff back same thing on the opposite side I want some of this out of here and I'm just running my blade right back to my thumb and what that should do is even everything out there we go should even everything out and make it a nice clean transition I want that a little bit more flat on the bottom. I want to clear some more of that stuff out. So just feathering this right through. There we go. Now I'm going to take down some of the shape here on the head. I want it to be a little bit more flat. Expose a little bit more of my collar. There we go. That's looking better. That's looking better. Yeah, just a couple of hairs that I'm nitpicking over here. And then I'm going to shut this down. That's going to be good right there. I'm going to let that go because I could spend all, all day trimming these things up and nitpicking over hairs that are out of place in my opinion. But there you go. We've got a little bit of travel on the underneath side. Like I said, I wish I could have rolled some of that on the opposite side, but I have that more even on this side. But at the end of the day, it's still going to fish for you. We still got what we're after. We have that nice cream underneath side. Some of these hairs, as they get wet when you're fishing it, it'll have more of that tan exposed on the body. And uh, it'll run right back to your tail. So there we have. And the last thing that I did want to point out is while I still have a lot of hair on that on that head it is still compressible I'm still able to move that stuff around side to side it's still compressible 
it's not like a bass popper or anything like that. It's where when you when you push your you you pinch those things, it, it it's solid. Like those things do not move. Um, this there's still some good compression and everything on it, so it's going to allow the water to get into the uh, in between the individual fibers, and it's going to help that fly sink a little bit. But there is Kelly Gallup's two-toned woolly sculpin. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week.